In this presentation, I will talk about the composite filling step-by-step -step procedure. The first step to do a composite filling is to do a quick history taking procedure and a quick exam of the dentition. In the history taking, we should take some information from the patient saying that there is no spontaneous pain or no continuous pain after the removal of the stimulus. These two things are very important to exclude the endodontic treatment. And then we should do a quick examination of the dentition and see the intended to the intended tooth for the restoration and do not do a mistake of restoring or doing another tooth. The second step is to do a shade selection procedure in which we take a shade guide and see the color of the tooth that is being restored and take the composite restoration necessary accordingly. The third step is to use the articulating paper to know and see the places of the occlusal contacts so that after doing the restoration we have some idea, we would be having some idea about the areas of the contact uh, between the uh, opposing teeth and so that you I think guys most of you has passed through this situation when we try to carve or build the restoration uh, as the normal anatomy that we have studied in dental anatomy as possible but uh, but after doing the restoration and uh, spending so much time on that we will after that remove so much of it because of the uh, impingation between the uh, two opposing teeth and the high spots between them so that doing this step will facilitate the knowledge about the areas of contact between the teeth and carving the tooth accordingly the uh, fourth step is to take a silicone putty impression like this impression that is taken for the uh, tooth that is prepared for a crown but the same idea is done to, uh, to be taken for a tooth and when I say it is taken for a tooth uh, I mean the tooth that is not destructed and uh, a class 1 tooth a caries that is uh, easily recorded by the impression putty so that then after the tooth preparation we may put the composite in the impression putty and then uh, replace it on the tooth so that regaining the normal and natural anatomy and appearance of the tooth before preparation after doing all of this the next step is to do anesthesia to the intended tooth for the upper teeth we will do infiltration and for the lower teeth we will do a block for the inferior alveolar nerve and that is specifically for the uh, lower posterior teeth for the lower anterior teeth, we might do infiltration. The inferior alveolar nerve is this nerve, as we can see it here in this picture, IAN, and the lingual nerve, the LN, is medial to it. We should both uh, know them and know how to anesthetize them. The next step is to do the isolation. 
and when I say isolation, I mean the rubber dam isolation. In the situation, in the composite restoration uh, situation, uh, the rubber dam isolation is the most important thing besides the endodontic treatment, of course, to use the rubber dam isolation. Because uh, as we have known in the video of the of the composite restoration that the composite restoration is a synthetic polymer resin that is hydrophobic so that it hates water so that we cannot put water on it or anything like that so that the rubber dam isolation is of great importance during the composite restoration procedure or in the instances that we cannot use the rubber dam isolation we might use the high volume evacuator in association with the cotton rules and cotton pads in another uh, circumstances as you can see here in this picture there are so many types of the uh, high volume evacuators and saliva ejectors that we may use the next step is to put a matrix band and a wedge and this thing is done only for a class 2 preparation before a class 2 preparations so that we will not uh, do an injury to the adjacent tooth we have generally three types of bands the universal band the adult mod band and the pedo universal band after that we start the preparation procedure the preparation procedure is started using a high speed handpiece with a diamond bear because the enamel is cut by the high uh, by the high high speed hand pieces and diamond bears okay guys and that is started from the occlusal pits the mesial one and the distal one this is the typical thing and then we and then we proceed with the fissured bear the first thing we use the round bear and then we use the fissured bear we can keep using the round bear without the use of the fissured bear but the fissured bear is good in the composite restoration preparation procedures because it will uh, this fissured bear this fissured bear will help us to do the beveling which is very necessary for the retention procedure for the for the retention form making a procedure uh, for the composite restoration uh, in general you should guys check the videos of the principles of tooth preparations so that you would be able to know what are the principles that we should follow during the tooth preparation uh, which are in general and uh, at a glance we should do the outline form according to the caries extension or according to the previous restoration if we are doing a retreatment procedure and on a sound tooth structure the second principle which is uh, we should have a retention form for the composite restoration and that is by the bubbling procedure and the third thing is to have the resistance form of the preparation and that is by keeping enough thickness for the tooth and for the composite restoration at least two millimeters almost and uh, to prevent the formation of the citrus concentration areas which act like a stab in the back of the restoration the fourth thing is of course to have a convenience form allowing for the uh, intru uh, introduction of the instruments inside the cavity and finally the finishing and cleaning of the restoration I should indicate here that when we completed the preparation of the enamel by the use of the high speed hand pieces then we will uh, prepare the dentin by the low speed hand pieces in association with the carbide bears and hand instruments 
this is the round carbide bear and this is the uh, fisher carbide bear and this is a hand instrument called called enamel hatchet that we use to do the uh, final preparation and finishing of the restoration uh, of sorry of the preparation uh, this is the picture of the preparation that we should have after the finishing and cleaning of the preparation and after having the adequate outline form retention formed by bubbling resistance formed by enough thickness and the prevention of citrus concentration areas and convenience form and final finishing and cleaning procedure by the use of the hand instruments and the low speed hand pieces to have this finished and cleaned preparation after that we remove the the uh, matrix band and wedge and insert a new matrix band in association with retainer in this case uh, in this case we will use the universal or the Toffley Meyer retainer because this is the most uh, uh, widely used retainer as we have studied in college and after that um, or any kind of retainer any kind of retainer you can use it is okay but after the completion of the tooth preparation procedure we should uh, use the uh, matrix band in association with a retainer and a wedge and that is in the case of the presence of a proximal tooth caries um, mesially or distally MO, DO or MDO uh, caries uh, of the teeth uh, in this uh, step we should do burnishing for the matrix band and that burnishing is to by using a ball burnisher and uh, doing the burnishing procedure from the internal internal of the uh, band so that it will take uh, the shape of the adjacent tooth and be adapted very well to the adjacent tooth so that we will have a good contact areas with the adjacent teeth so that the burnishing of the matrix band from the interior for the adaptation and the improvement of the contact areas is very important during the uh, placement of the uh, matrix band and retainer procedure after uh, completion of the preparation of the tooth and uh, placement of the band and retainer we should do the palpal protection procedure and you can see the video about the palpal protection procedure and the theory be behind it in general when we have a uh, restoration we say that the restoration like the composite restoration and amalgam restoration will replace the enamel so that we should put something that will replace the uh, dentin which is which is in this case with the composite restorations we generally use the glass inomer cements and in the case of deep cavities that we will that we will reach the pulp and we are so close to it we can uh, put a cl uh, calcium hydroxide or dical and in the deep uh, preparation areas only so that the calcium hydroxide will do the indirect uh, pulp capping procedure and uh, stimulate the formation of the secondary dentin at that area and remineralize that area and in association with the fluoride uh, release from the glass inomer cement everything would be okay after doing the pulp protection procedure we do the application of the bonding system in general we can use the 15 rule for the application of the bonding system Parts, which are 15 seconds etching procedure, 15 seconds 
rinsing procedure and 15 seconds drying procedure uh, guys the uh, this rule is a general rule but you should always always read the manufacturers instructions about the time and period of the application of the acid etching and rinsing and drying procedure because some acid etching uh, some acid etchants and teeth may require the application of the acid etch uh, for 120 seconds 2 minutes so that it is very important to read the manufacturer instructions in every step uh, and when I say in every step I, I mean not just here in the composite restoration uh, but in the amalgam restoration in the uh, impression dental impressions uh, in any part or in any product uh, for any product sorry for any product that you have in your clinic you should read the manufacturers instructions and you should know how to properly handle this material so that you would have the best and most perfect results that you would ever imagine serving the patient and making you a good dentist in front of him uh, then we apply the bonding agent uh, resin by a micro brush and after that we may spread the bonding agent bonding resin by a spray of air using the air syringe so that we will help in spreading of the bonding agent and after that and finally we will put the uh, composite restoration by the incremental technique when I say the incremental technique, I mean that we put, we will put the composite restoration increment by increment, not exceeding two millimeters thickness so that the light can penetrate it. That depends on the shade of the restoration. Darker shades need smaller increments and uh, on the composite restoration. And that's why I have said that you should read the manufacturer's instructions because in general the uh, curing time uh, ranges from 20 to 40 uh, seconds for the uh, composite restoration increment to be cured and 20 seconds for the bonding agent to be cured and 15 seconds for the acid etching to work uh, the best technique that I use and I think it is the best uh, technique to do the increments of the composite restoration is to put in mind the C factor that says we should have the least contact of the uh, composite surfaces with the two surfaces and that ranges from two to three surfaces uh, we will use the three surface contacts the the first layer which is the layer number one in this case and that is put on the whole pulpal floor and that is very good for if you have an endodontic treatment or if you have um, any type of irregularities in the floor you can put the first layer if you are not putting uh, putting uh, if you not if you are not putting the glass ionomer cement or if you don't need to put the glass ionomer cement because we have also said that the composite restoration is not like the amalgam restoration uh, because it has some elasticity and it might be put without the need for the uh, glass ionomer cement so that uh, in general we sh uh, we put a uh, first layer or as I call it a ceiling layer uh, of composite then we put a mesial increment and then a distal increment after that we would have three attached surfaces of composite to the two structure and that is a nice C factor after the completion 
of these three increments the palpal one the mesial one and the distal one we build the uh, occlusal part the remaining occlusal part cusp by cusp you should build the mesial buccal cusp and after building it we shift to the uh, distal buccal cusp and then to the distal lingual cusp and then to the mesial lingual cusp guys the cuspids are built cusp by cusp so that you would have the best results and the most aesthetic results uh, regarding the composite restoration building procedure okay after that the composite restoration must be finished and polished using the composite finishing and polishing bears and discs and the interproximal finishing strips of course if we have a proximal uh, composite restoration uh, again these uh, have some uh, indications and colors that you should read the manufacturer's instruction to know how to use them properly because guys we in college we use uh, we study only the general ideas about these uh, dental products but we of course forget most of them when we go to uh, the clinic and uh, practice so that it is very important to refresh your knowledge about any product by reading the manufacturer's instruction this is very important finally we check the occlusion using the articulating paper this step is very important because so many uh, times the high spots are still uh, in the restoration and that will lead to uh, malocclusion and uh, probably a uh, pulpitis or apical periodontitis that will lead to a severe pain for the patient so that they remove the correction and checking of occlusion after doing a restoration is of a major importance during the uh, steps of any restoration procedure so that in general the steps that we do uh, or that we take to do a composite restoration are diagnosis, shade selection, anesthesia, isolation, preparation, band retainer and wedge placement procedure, pulpal protection, use of a bonding system, placement of a composite, finishing and polishing of the composite and then Check the checking of occlusion and dismissing of the patient. Thank you for improving yourself by listening to this presentation. Always try to know, spread knowledge, and construct the world. Always try to be kind to others because life is not short but it is limited, and that is for the greatest benefit to the humankind.